This weekend is finally here, the most highly anticipated action film of the year. A movie that contains the legendary action heroes of our youth, along with the best action heroes of current cinema, and Steve Austin. I know this isn't the kind of movie that I, a cinema snob, would normally be interested in. But it's not every day that I get to see a movie in the theaters. And it's even more shocking since this movie hasn't even been released yet. That's when you know you've made it as a critic. When you get preview screenings. So okay, let's watch this puppy. Hey Jackson, hurry it up. I'm gonna bust a roid waiting for you. Well, at least you found the e-barracks, Sterling. Stop eye-fucking me, boy. I'm reviewing another movie called The Expendables, aren't I? <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter. I'm sure that this movie is just as star-powered. Look, it's, uh, got a guy from an episode of 90210, a guy from The Paper Chase, not the movie, the TV series, a guy from a movie called Nom Angels, uh, a guy from an episode of Coach, and another guy from a movie called Nom Angels. Christ, you're killing me here. Please tell me it has some kind of star power behind the camera, like a John McTiernan or a Richard Donner. Nope, just Sirio H. Santiago, the genius behind Cage Heat 2, Stripped of Freedom, and, oh, son of a bitch, fucking Nom Angels again! The Expendables, Nom Angels, back to back. Clearly he has learned all he needs to know from sometimes collaborator Roger Corman. The Expendables opens with a fully armed game of red light, green light. Oh, this game is so much fun. Okay, okay. Green light. Red light. Ha! Busted! You have to play Russian Roulette now. The group of soldiers here seem to be taking careful precautions as they sneak up on the farmhouse from Shane. Oh, that's right, it's still Vietnam. I couldn't tell, you know, with Nam being so identical to the Midwest. I really am having trouble believing that this is a Nam movie. Not because it's not filmed in Nam. I stopped believing that minutes ago. But because it seriously lacks a rockin' 60s soundtrack for this to be a true Nam movie. There. Much better. This movie's still gonna suck. I don't know. This movie is starting out kinda slow. If this were a James Glickenhaus film, we would have seen the lead get his life saved by his best friend several times now. Oh shit, I recognize that crying anywhere. Rex Reed is in trouble. Oh crap, he mildly upset that baby. The squad finds their target, which I assume is this storage room of weapons. Ah damn, there's enough explosives in here to give Wiley e. Coyote an early Christmas. Yeah, that might sting a little bit, but luckily, someone wise told him that if you get shot several times in the knees, to just sit down on your knees. I'll meet you back at the LZ. Where the hell are you going? I'm in a fucking orphan back there. Jesus, the first five minutes of the movie The Orphan are really violent. Well, now that their mission of providing an opening sequence with no setup or context is complete, it's time to get the fuck out of this hellhole. 
Gonna tell that Mary about Uncle John. He claimed he has a misery, but he having a lot of fun. Oh, baby. Yes, baby. <laughs> yes. I didn't do that to make the movie seem more nummy. I just really wish I was watching Predator right now. Since we're out of that loud and violent gun battle, we can finally hear the hero of the film say a line or two of dialogue. I complete the mission, rather than having to go in again. The casualty should least surprise you, sir, knowing full well the kinds of missions I'm assigned, sir. <laughs> okay, not exactly the low-pitched, gruff, non-hero voice I was expecting. Just what are you insinuating, Captain? That you give me the suit! Uh, let me try this line again, sorry. Here's your new unit, Captain. They're all experienced and they're all good in combat. Give me a damage report! Yes, sir. These men are delinquents! I never said they weren't. All their CEOs have asked for them to be transferred. I said they were good in combat. Seriously, this guy's voice is so high school that it sounds less like he's talking about a group of delinquent soldiers and more like he's talking about which delinquents Ernest can rehabilitate at camp. I want to see you up and about as soon as possible. Okay. And Cabrini, that's a direct order. Yes, sir, Captain, sir. <laughs> Luckily, this is an ensemble piece, so we do have a cast of other characters who are less sitcom-y, like, uh, stoner guy, black guy, religious guy. A Christian. Have you opened your heart to Jesus Christ? <laughs> no, the only thing I open my heart to is a Jesus Chrysler. Talk about rich Corinthian leather. Any other worthy characters to mention? Eight. Hey. Ain't my brothers. Oh yeah, how could I forget about racist guy? Oh thank God, Wild Thing Rick Vaughn is here. This will surely take their baseball team right to the World Series. Present. Present what? Sir. Present sir. Yes. Good. Good, Jackson. Very good. Watching this guy argue with people is like watching Chandler and Joey argue about what time to go down to the coffee shop. Their first mission is to capture a Vietnamese general and bring him back to the base for interrogation. And luckily, these men have a good, strong leader to motivate them into battle. We're not ground forces, we're special forces, so I wouldn't know. I wouldn't care, and you don't matter! Now listen up! I can't get enough of this guy. It's like listening to Skippy from Family Ties on his period. In order to capture the general, the men rig a bridge with explosives. And they have to do it quickly, too, because I hear Bruno Mattai needs this bridge come nightfall. You know, you could probably take any scene from this movie and dub it in with audio from Strike Commando. Dirty sons of bitches! Shit! But unfortunately, all we have is just the audio from this movie. The Expendables. Okay, Jackson, you're on your own. You mean you're not gonna check on me? You're the explosives, man. God. The general shows up and the Expendables rush into action. Oh, best hurry, Master Tetsu is getting away. The Expendables succeed for the most part with some minor stab wounds to the general. Nothing to get too upset over. You were out of control, your men were out of control, and you weren't working as a unit. Negative, sir. You got your good colonel. Mission accomplished. The operation succeeded. You failed! You see, even though you succeeded at your mission, I'm still gonna consider this a colossal failure, since I'm the angry colonel and I get pissed at everything. Might as well go back to the cabin and relax a little bit. Ho ho ho! Bad touch there, Captain. There better not be anything else inappropriate going on in here. Uh. Oh, now what the hell is this? This is the Expendables, not Full Metal Jacket. There will be no sucky sucky in this movie. Okay, Sterling, you brought her in. You shoot her! It's nice to know the captain is following the Joe Pilato Rhodes method of leading. Steal, shoot that woman. And the whole time, this girl just stands there quietly as the captain tells his men why it's a good idea to kill her. Well, can't we just arrest her? She can't have seen that much of the camp. She was, you know, under a tarp in the truck. On what charge do we arrest her? 
There is none. See, you kill her quietly or she kills you. Nice guys finish last. Dead. Fantastic. It's this captain's biggest motivational speech yet, and it's to convince his men why they should shoot an unarmed woman. Now the movie is less like Full Metal Jacket and more like Casualties of War. Shit, just bring the Rhodes audio back into it. And anybody fucks with my command, they get court-martialed, they get executed. Eventually, the Expendables get attacked by a group of wandering prostitutes who they end up using to find out the whereabouts of the enemy base. I would be more excited about this sequence if it involved Airwolf. But, I guess I could at least throw in the Airwolf theme song. If that can't get you pumped up about blowing up an army base, nothing can. Well, holy crap, they blew the moonlight right out of that scene. With two successful missions under their belt, the Expendables need some relief. Might as well get plenty of booze and some high-quality hookers that hopefully the captain won't make them shoot this time. Wait, I know this setting. Any minute now, a painted blue Big Bird is going to come rolling out, and it's going to get really depressing. But that doesn't matter, because all of these men want to do is just get laid. You boys have fun. I'm going upstairs. <laughs> yeah, you have fun there, Boner. I'll just make sure not to tell Kirk Cameron on you. Oh, 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 get back, Satan! Hey, cool it! Whoops, too late. Kirk already found out. What? You're gonna, you're gonna try to blow me away too, huh? That's no, I won't do that! You don't understand! She startled me, that girl. She startled me and I, I just overreacted, that's all. My god, it's like watching Ted Haggard take his first hit of crack. This character's name is Lord, and he's the religious stereotype of the movie. Yes, his name is actually Lord. That's like naming the captain Moscaccioli. Oh wait, how do I know that this character is Italian again? The new white form I'm trying to make you a good officer, you dumb what? Oh, that's it. Thanks, racism. Things get pretty heated when the Alpha Betas show up and bust heads with the Expendables, landing them in military jail. Just in time, too, because Goldfinger's henchmen have arrived to take out the military base and perform the most heavily armed panty raid I've ever seen. The Viet Cong free their general and take several hostages. Several scantily clad hostages. There's that corpsman influence again. Hard at work. Well, since the Dirty Dozen are a little old by now, and the Delta Force is all sequeled out, might as well get the Expendables to perform the rescue operation. Jackson, track him. Let him be the rabbit. Yes, he can be your rabbit, because everyone loves a good old wartime Bugs Bunny cartoon. Does your tobacco taste different lately? The general has his wounds patched up by the MD while the expendables move in closer. This is awful close to the border, sir. Oh, don't worry, I'm sure the Arkansas Border Patrol won't mind. So Adrian Zamed gets captured, leaving the rest of the Expendables to go forward with the rescue mission themselves. What do you think? Should we follow him in? Yeah. <laughs> Easy, Chief. He said rescue them, not rape them. The captain meets face to face with the wounded general once more. You will stop him. No, it's okay. He's just still sore from Little Mac punching him in the bandages. There really isn't a whole lot to make fun of here in this climax. It's just a lot of shooting. A lot of shooting. And the characters have their faces done up in dark camouflage, so I don't know who in the hell is getting shot. But at least I do know that there is a lot of fucking shooting in this last act. PJ Souls and Sean Young's characters from Stripes get rescued, and I'm pretty sure Reb Brown's voice makes a cameo. Go, go! Hit the deck! 
That wasn't me adding in a sound from another movie. I think Reb's voice just carried in from Robo War. After they all leave the set of Children of Men, the fight carries out into the fields. Motherfuckers! Motherfuckers! Those guys suck, right? Those guys suck, right? Dwight from the office sacrifices himself so the remaining few expendables can get away in the helicopter, leaving us with the hippiest sounding credits tune they possibly could have gotten for this movie. There's no reason for the hating, cause we all won't hate for long. There's no reason for the killing, cause we'll all be dead for long. Right now in heaven, John Blutarski is smashing a guitar. Watching the 1988 Expendables feels more like I'm watching Inglorious Bastards 2, Part 2. They're both pretty much the same movie. Stock macho characters randomly shooting everything that moves in Vietnam, Florida. But at least this movie one-ups that movie in that this movie ditches the day-for-night technique and actually shoots at night. Plus, when they're not done up in the camouflage, I can't actually see the actors' faces. Something that was completely lost on the makers of Inglorious Bastards 2. But they're both pieces of shit, mainly because they both fail at providing us with any music from Jefferson Airplane. I lost my ball! Fall in, private! 